If the fashion capitals seem a long way from Tebe's hometown in Kimberley, the matriarchs in his life gave him the belief he would make it. So these two lovely women over here have been a massive influence in your career and your life. How important has it been to have this incredible support structure? I mean, you even got your mom on your shirt over there. It's been incredible. I feel really blessed to be able to do what I do, all thanks to these lovely ladies and my family in general. I used to watch fashion TV all the time and Ugly Betty and the September issue and all those fashion related shows that came out then. And it's so incredible that, you know, over these past few months, I've gotten to meet every single one of the people in those movies or films. So yeah, it's, yeah, life is unbelievable. What was Tebe like growing up? He was a very sweet boy, you know, very indoors. And when his mom buys him clothes, he will always cut them and change the whole design. On Fridays, when I arrived at home, Tebe will be there watching FTV with my mom. So he will always explain to my mom that, you know, Mama, this is Paris, this is what is happening, blah, blah. And then my mom will say, oh, Tebe, so are you saying one day I will be there? Then Tebe will say, yes, Mama. <laughs> then my mother will say, what will I be wearing? Mom, Mama, will I wear all those clothes? Said, yes, Mama, I will make something nice for you, you know. <laughs> I love it. He was just destined to be a fashion designer. And the best part is you get to wear his clothes now. I love his clothes, you know. You can see the hands, everything, man. Everything is just suiting me so perfect. I love his clothes. <laughs> Love them. We trust him, you know, for whatever occasion. We don't even have to stress about it because he understands us so well. It's amazing from watching Paris as a young child on the television to now showcasing at Paris and London, the biggest platform for a fashion designer. You really are an example of just following those dreams. So things are really busy for me. Right now I'm working on my next collection titled African Studies, uh, which is coming soon. Uh, but instead of telling you about it, I can just go show you at the factory. A fierce work ethic saw Tebe do internships with major South African designers and retailers before entering an African Fashion International Fast Track competition to start his own label. So this is African Queen, the production house that does my stock run after I showcase my collection at uh, Fashion Week. They tally up those orders and produce the whole stock. So I want to introduce you to Bianca, who's in charge of everything. Of course, cool, so you handle all the craziness. Yeah, so what we do is we take Tebe's runway samples and we produce them for mass consumption. So we'll sample it up, get the fittings right for the normal figure, and then it goes into production and our wonderful staff creates it and then it gets shifted up to whoever orders. And we're actually busy on production right now and we're halfway from what I see. Hello ladies! <laughs> so all this is actually an order from a big uh, retailer that really liked things that I showed a few weeks ago at Fashion Week. So right now we're busy working on a caftan. It's going to look like that. So this is where all the magic happens. Yeah, and uh, speaking of magic, I've actually organized a shoot with my friend Art Ferrips. He's an incredible photographer. And we're about to shoot my new collection that I previewed in Paris titled African Studies. Awesome! Mr. Magugu also studied photography, but there's only so much he can do in a day. And right now, he has a brand to build. This is actually one of my favorite garments from the collection. When I was younger, my mom always used to tell me to write down all my nightmares and dreams into a journal. And a few weeks ago, I happened to find the journal and I thought it'd be quite interesting to impose it onto silk. So that garment right there is actually Duchess satin with my journals written on it and Airtek mesh. And then I had like teal paint strokes around it just to lead the eye around the body. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite garments. And when I was in Paris and I went to said hopefully it has more dreams than nightmares. You, the way he just throws that so casually. Yeah. And, and a went tour just said it's about the outfit. So that was one of her favorites Yeah, as well. that was one of her favorites That's as well. amazing though, right? Someone else said though that it might be a problem because someone could psychoanalyze me because they know exactly yeah. like oh, my deepest, darkest That's secrets. all That's your personal stuff right out there for people yeah. to see. But my collections are quite personal anyway. Season after season, all my collections are actually named after university subjects. So in the past I've had art history, geology, um, gender studies. So my upcoming collection actually is called African Studies, which is about merging motifs and prints from my own heritage with Amazing. quite tailored, forward-looking shapes. This is like a lovely contemporary twist on the Audrey Hepburn raincoat from the 60s, right? That's it's interesting that you said that, actually. I love juxtapositioning in my work, like ideas of masculine and feminine, past and future. And I think all those 
elements are actually represented in this garment because this is outerwear but there's all the makings of a woman's bra and all these sort of opposites I think come together to create something quite quite interesting. Okay, you can snap out of the model mode now. <laughs> okay. Tebe understands women, there's no doubt about it. He's got a massive female influence in his life. He knows how to dress a woman, make her feel beautiful and make her feel powerful. Yeah, he does. I love this because it's so sophisticated and elegant. It's like the perfect thing to wear to maybe fashion week. You know, walk in and make an entrance. Using dramatic pop art graphics to catch the eye from across a room, Tebe also understands the close-up seduction of fine print. Showcasing it on a platform like London and Paris Fashion Week is absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, how was that experience for you? Unbelievable. Like, to this day, I still don't believe it. In Paris, I was shortlisted for the LVMH Prize, and I went to Paris and showcased to Anna Winter and Naomi Campbell, Bella Hadid, and everyone I've ever looked up to, and they were really impressed with what I had to offer. And, and then a week before that, I actually had during London Fashion Week, an exhibition at Somerset House organized by the British Fashion Council. And I just wanted to create an installation space that really celebrated South Africa and the progress we've made. It came out really well, it actually won the overall award. Well, thanks so much for sharing your remarkable talent with us today. And I can guarantee you they're pretty sure you're going to be dressing all of those people you looked up to as a kid. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. He's worked with Italian Vogue in Milan. He's just back from Paris. Plus, he secretly plans on being a DJ. Never a dull moment.